In the previous episode, I set sail to Santa Cruz Island, solo, under a small craft advisory to celebrate two years of boat ownership. Um, there is a small craft advisory in effect until 4 a.m. tonight. Small craft advisory, but I don't see that showing as far as small craft advisories go. This one's uh, pretty nice. <laughs> We have a little bit of a situation here at the anchorage. I uh, woke up about 2 a.m. Our stern anchor is really getting stretched right now. The wind just wants to blow us pretty much right onto these rocks and we are slowly dragging and have been uh, the whole night. And now it's time to take some action. So I'm uh, hunkered down below right now, just kind of trying to straighten the boat up because I know that I have a windy and rough passage ahead of me. Um, we're sitting here on the hook in Coches Prietos. Um, you know, I set the hook down knowing there's a small craft advisory coming and sure enough, it hit around 2 a.m. Started to wake up with all the wind noise. Um, and I was also watching our spot on my Navionics plot. And it did look like we were starting to slowly drag towards the east, uh, towards shallow water rocks and cliffs. I went and let out all of the scope I had on the end of my stern anchor. And so it's, I'm basically at the bitter end and it's under so much tension, I don't think I'm gonna be able to undo it. Um, so I may have to cut that. Uh, this is the least valuable part of my whole boat equation starting with lives and my Florian, and I'd put fingers pretty high on that list. Fingers are worth a lot more than a, a fortress anchor. So I've tied a fender off to that, and I'm just gonna cut it, and then see what happens on this wild ride. Okay, this is sort of the attitude that we were looking for. I think the boat is gonna, gonna be settled in here at least long enough for me to go try and pick up that stern hook. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, I'm gonna jump in the dinghy. I'm bringing in a little VHF radio uh, for extra precaution in case uh, something happens. Uh, there's a few boats around. I just saw a fishing boat pass me, so if I get blown out to sea, maybe someone can get me. But yeah, I'll roll uphill to that, to the buoy, grab the anchor, and then the wind will just shoot me right back to the boat. Uh, fingers crossed. Really curious to see what the uh, anchor looks like in the bottom there. Um, yeah, this is definitely the most I've ever had this anchor drag. So let's see. Yeah, that anchor is as set as it can get. Um, I can just see uh, the round bar at the top of the flukes. Both flukes are 100% buried in the orientation that they need to be. Um, so yeah, I can't really explain that. So you probably can't see that, but the, the dinghy was caught uh, up on top of the second spreader, uh, which happens when Lynn's blowing it backwards. Uh, dinghy is secured on four corners, uh, expecting it to be pretty windy. So we want that secured. Uh, now I think we can get the hook up and get out of here. And it's gonna be probably a pretty exciting sail home. Let's 
definitely one of the hard parts about anchoring it by yourself is uh, keeping the boat over the anchor so the windlass doesn't work too hard. Yeah, we're gusting pretty good now. Last one. One more time at the helm to drive the boat back on top of the anchor. A challenge for the solo sailor in high winds. All right, we're gonna go right into uh, putting up the sail. We got about 16 knots of wind right here. I know it's gonna be a windy day, so I'm just gonna start off uh, with the reef. Uh, that was tricky. Yeah, wind uh, is even higher than I thought. I'm sure you can see the white caps. Whew. Uh, who needs coffee when you're uh, putting the sail up by yourself and 30 knots of wind? So yeah, we went, uh, we just went straight into the second reef. Finally got the sail kind of trimmed uh, the way that I want. So I just want it really, really flat and really tight. Uh, but now I think we're good. I'm gonna start running downwind and we're gonna have a, a heck of a sail all the way home. Yeah, it's uh, blowing 30 plus right now. as a morning as we could have. And now we are sailing downhill. Uh, there's 30, 35 knots of wind. Uh, so I just got the double reef main up and we're cruising around seven knots. So yeah, I, I kind of love it. I don't think we're gonna see anybody else out here. The boat feels fine with just that uh, double reef in. Um, the autopilot's working pretty hard, so who knows, and we'll see what this does to my batteries. Might have to hand steer, or might have to fire up the engine just for some, some extra voltage. I got big following seas. And it's actually pretty comfortable. The temperature is fine, you know, I'm not wearing my jacket. Granted, I've been doing a lot of work. there. So it looks like uh, we're just getting the east end of Santa Cruz on our beam. So I think uh, we can jive around and set our course for Ventura. So. We might chicken jive. Chicken jive, coming up. So the chicken jive is essentially just a big, long tack all the way around 270 degrees and is very safe and controlled in high winds. A very important technique for single-handed sailing. Wasn't so bad. None of the vendors want to stay on board. So 
So as we uh, kind of move east down uh, the backside of Santa Cruz, or getting away from the higher winds, you know, it's uh, 30, I saw 35 uh, when we were leaving Cochase and kind of heading into the wind uh, to get the sail up. But now as we're getting down, uh, getting closer to Yellow Banks, uh, there's only about 25 knots. So I'm showing, uh, you know, 18 apparent right now. I think I can actually let out a little Genoa. Uh, this is something you have to be careful doing, especially single hand when you got a lot of wind, uh, is you have to manage two lines at once. Uh, and you do not want that furling line to let go uh, and let all of your sail out because uh, that can be a bear to get back in. So that's the, the key component to letting out the head sail on the furler in high winds, uh, whether you're with a crew or single hand, is uh, controlling that furling line because that's what's allowing the sail to come out and how much sail to come out. So we're gonna be using the working sheet a little bit so the sail's not flogging around, but the primary thing on the winch is gonna be that furly line. All right, so what I've done is I have uh, the furly line on the port winch here, and the clutch is open, and then I'm gonna start using the working jib sheet to pull it out and just pay out as much sail as I want with this. So hopefully you can kind of see that. And I can see the wind is starting to take it now. And I think we're going to start with not that much sail. So I sheet this one in. That's looking about right to me. So my hope now is that the boat's gonna sail a little more balanced, uh, reduce a bit of the weather helm, get some pressure on the bow, uh, and pick up some boat speed. So we'll just uh, keep an eye on this, uh, monitor the amount of uh, cloth we have up, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be an awesome sail. It is an awesome sail. Quite quickly at the end of that. Uh, the wind's back up to over 30, uh, getting overpowered, so the jib is gone. If that's not enough, there's just uh, lobster pots everywhere. Which are definitely hard to see in the white caps. Whew. That seems to still be escalating. Um, and when the wind is picking up, the fun is going down, so I'm gonna pull into Yellow Banks right here, uh, see if I can download some weather, and uh, yeah, take a break for a second and plan a responsible uh, attack for the rest of the afternoon. I may, I may just ride this out here. Uh, we'll see. So yeah, let's uh, just take a breather and reassess. Uh, sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Uh, I'm just gonna put the hook down here. Should be able to ride this out, no problem. Uh, my bimini's falling apart. Uh, it is really blowing. Uh, I don't need to push anything super hard. I have 
no real deadline. So we're just gonna anchor, try to get some protection. Yeah, safety first. So we are hunkered down pretty well here now. Uh, I've been watching the, the anchor. Uh, we are set in, we're not moving back an inch, although we are sailing back and forth like crazy. Um, that's one of the annoying features of this boat is it really fishtails around and puts herself broadside to 30 knot gusts. I have no idea why. Um, might be a riding sail in my future. Uh, but yeah, just kind of cleaned up the cockpit a little bit, took stock of everything, uh, made sure the sails tied down really well, make sure the Genoa isn't going to unfurl, um, re-secured the dinghy because it was starting even though I tied it down, um, it wasn't tight enough and it was <laughs> trying to blow away. Uh, so that's locked down on four corners. Uh, my bimini, which you can hear shaking itself apart. Um, it actually busted a couple fittings, but I think I have that repaired. Uh, zip ties are a great thing to have on board. And now we'll just kind of sit here and wait for this to, to blow over. Luckily it's still kind of pleasant out, you know, it's not too cold. Uh, the sun's out. Yeah, we're just uh, life on the hook in 30 knots. That's a, it's a reality out here at the Santa Barbara Channel Islands. So yeah. You gotta have good ground tackle and you gotta know how to use it. In the next episode, I find myself pinned at the anchorage for 18 hours, battling boredom as much as the elements. The next morning brought us very mixed up sea conditions and yet another rough passage home.